What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Art of Photography. My name is Ted Forbes and in this video I want to talk about black and white inkjet printing and how to get the best results, what some of the problems you're going to see are and how to get around those. And I did an, a video a couple shows ago where I talked about just inkjet printing in general. I looked at a lot of color work and I was originally going to do black and white as part of that and then I realized that this is really complex enough to make a separate video with because there are a lot of real specific issues that you're going to find uh, with inkjet printing and a lot of this has to do not so much with the uh, money that you spend on a printer um, it can happen at any technology and part of that problem that you have is when you're asking a printer that's even set up to do photographs that's going to print a black and white image using only one ink it can be a bit problematic and I have two images that I want to show you here to start with to point out some of these problems and I don't know if these are going to pick up on the video as well as they do in real life but one of the biggest problems that you're going to have when you do that is a color cast and these are two different images this one on the right was done about eight years ago Ago, I want to say um, it's done on nice paper. I'd done some proofing and it was done at home on a very inexpensive Canon PIXMA photo printer. The one on the right was done, this is one I sent off to Adorama PIX, and even their process um, it came out with a slight green tint to it, which you can kind of see here, which is something that is not very desirable in a black and white print. And the one on the right that I did at home is fine, but it has a purple cast to it. And a lot of times, especially with the lower end printers that you're going to purchase uh, for home use, the purple cast is very prevalent. But even this green cast on the one that I had professionally done, the problem was is the process that I selected to do this. And so that's one of the biggest problems that you have with inkjet printing uh, in general, uh, when you're asking one ink to basically handle all of the work. And for a long time, I, this is what sent me back into doing darkroom. This is why I still have uh, a darkroom setup that I use today because it's just really difficult in the digital realm to get that quality that you want. And another couple things that you're looking for, and both these are pretty high contrast prints, but you know, this goes back to the zone system that Fred Archer and Ansel Adams we're teaching where basically what you're doing with a black and white print is you're looking for extremes. So your bright whites or when the highlights we call them um, is the white of the paper and the blackest darks are you know the closest to that pure black ink. And the, the difficulty areas when you're rendering a black and white print are usually detail areas that happen in the shadows and sometimes in the highlights. And so that's one of the things you really want to work at when you're developing a print. Now these two prints are not going to give you a great example of dynamic range necessarily because the image is pretty high contrast in both of them, but you do want to look for detail in the shadow areas because a lot of times that's what's really important, particularly when you consider Ansel was doing landscapes and a lot of detail that would fall just naturally the way the sun hits light, um, shadows of trees or mountains or whatever. And so that's one of the things you're looking for. now. There's a couple ways around this and one of the earliest technologies that attempted to solve this was back in the 1990s, a gentleman named John Cohn started a company called Pisography and Pisography was developing ink set replacements that were basically seven different levels of black and white ink and it also came with drivers for your computer so you could print these and they were designed for very specific printer models and they're still around today and they make wonderful stuff. One of the biggest problems with Pisography though is that it is a little bit out of reach for people who do casual printing. Um, first of all, it's very expensive to get into. Um, inks are calibrated and designed to do very specific things like warm tone, cool tone, sepia. Uh, even if you want to do digital negatives to have a negative made that you can go do a contact print with, which is a great way to work, but there's a specific ink set that was designed just for that. So if you really were going to do a lot of black and white printing at home and you wanted a lot of versatility, it's a tough route to go because you really need multiple printers to set those up in and it gets really expensive really quick. What you're starting to see now, and this ties back to what I was talking about with the Epson P600, is the P600 has several different levels of ink in there. In fact, there are three, and the inks are designed, um, they're, they're completely redesigned as new inks, so they're going to give you a better density in general. And so between the three inks that you have at any given time, you're going to get a better dynamic range, you're going to get a better tonal density. Now, there's actually four different blacks that are in the printer, and there's two hard blacks, and the difference between the two of them is you're going to select one over the other depending on the media type that you're working with. And so basically one is 
is designed as a photo gloss paper uh, type of ink, and the other one is designed for matte finish papers. Now you can print photographs with either one of them, but you have to select the black that you're using. And you know, it's kind of confusing because there's a lot of papers that are offered, but you can consult the manual if you've got this type of printer and figure that out. Um, the only problem too is that when you change those two blacks, you do lose a little bit of ink in that conversion process. Now Epson have redesigned both those tanks now, so you lose, I think it's just a couple milliliters uh, when you do that switch over. But if you're trying to be efficient and economical with your printing, again, you kind of want to know what paper you're going to do. You don't want to switch back and forth a lot because you do lose a little bit of ink in that process, and that's very normal for printers like this. But what I would do is I would suggest, um, if you were serious about black and white printing, is one of two things, either getting a dedicated printer and going for something like the Pisography system um, and keeping up with that, or I think the slightly more economical option is to do something like the P600. And these three prints were all done on the P600. In fact, if we compare, um, for instance, these, these two are the exact same image, and I pulled one. This is the one that was done at Adorama on the left and the one that I did at home on the P600 on the right. And you can tell this is the exact same file that I printed from. It's, a, um, it's an older Photoshop document that I've got, but I did make sure I used the same file for this test comparison. And you can see that the P600, just right out of the box, gives you a lot more tonal range. You can see it inside the flower, see how this is a lot less contrasty than this one is, but it still holds enough detail, it still looks good, it still has a richness to it. And you can see in this leaf that's blurred out in the background too, it's a lot less um, you know, looming in the background as being this dark figure. And it's just a better tonal range. And you have a lot of versatility with the P600 uh, in terms of how the software and the drivers speak to the printer or two, and I'll show you how that works in just a second. But I was very happy with all of these. Um, and again, this was an older series uh, from a few years ago of, of botanicals that I was doing. Uh, these were all shot originally on film. These were all done four by five. And they were shot with Polaroid Type 55. And you can kind of tell because the way Polaroid Type 55 was a pack film. It's not made any longer. There's a company that's trying to revive it currently. But the pack film, uh, you would put in a special holder. You would make your image or your exposure. And then when you pulled it out, it would break the rollers and it would release the chemicals and it would instantly develop. You would peel it apart and you would have not only a negative, but a print inside that pack as well. Now the print, I never really cared for all that much, but the negatives were absolutely beautiful on the Type 55. They were the reason to spend the money to do it. And the fact that it was instant was, was kind of cool too. But one of the characteristics because of the way they carried in the frame is that you would get these these kind of messy borders where you could see the chemicals bleed through and there was a wire frame that, that held the whole pack together. And so anyway, it's kind of a desired look. You see people like, I mean, I was obviously very influenced by Tom Burrell when I did this. He works a lot with Type 55 and and there's a real specific look attached to that. Um, these two were done on my Cambo 4x5. Uh, actually, it's an 8x10 camera with a 4x5 back on it, and this last one was a pinhole image, uh, which is something I started to get into as well because I like the softer focus. Um, it's about a 45-minute exposure to get that image. One thing that's interesting, too, that I had never noticed before was, you know, I just shot these in my loft at the time, and you actually see one of the prints on the wall. I've never seen that in a printout before, which I think speaks quite a bit to the dynamic range that you're gonna get on a printer like this Epson. And, and you know, I think a lot of this is just a, it's a hallmark of newer technology. And when you're doing darkroom printing, and I do still love doing darkroom printing, I know not everybody does, it's a lot of work. Um, if you're printing your work in additions and trying to retain a consistency throughout, that work is much harder to do in the darkroom because you're making each print by hand. And especially if you want to revisit an edition later on, like a couple years down the road, unless you took really good notes, and even then you still have to do some testing. Uh, it's a laborious process, but that's kind of why on the fine art market that darkroom and prints still hold up in their value because especially if they're done by the artist because there is that handmade nature of it and even across an edition you don't have that consistency each print can be just ever so slightly different uh, even in the most consistent conditions that you can get in just because you're doing each one by hand. Now Inkjet is completely different. It's a lot easier to work with. Uh, the results stay consistent. Um, you know, time is not as much of a factor. And the other thing that's, that's really nice about Inkjet printing is that you don't have 
um, you know, issues that need to be solved, problems that come up can usually be solved with technology. Like I talked about these, these older printers that would, you know, leave me a purple cast. And it's not just even so much an older printer, it's the right technology for the job. And inkjet printing for black and white is just really tough like that because it's all about the shadows. It's all about the zones that you have in that range and that consistency. And one thing I'm really noticing out of that P600 is the localized contrast. And I think you see it best in this image. It's just beautiful. Um, it gives you a really clean, nice image. Um, the last print that I've got, uh, this is just a smaller one. Typically, and this is another subject for another day because it's not specific to any technology, but um, one of the things I'm kind of big on is I used to want to print my work really big all the time. I think a lot of people want to do that, especially when you're starting out. And I think now, um, of course, it depends on the image. Um, some images are really neat to blow up large, but for the most part, I like to print almost contact size. So this is actually just a four by five printout, and this was also done on the printer, same image, same file. I just printed it smaller because I like that intimacy. Um, when you see something hanging on the wall, it's framed well, and when it's smaller, it draws you in. And that's just something that I remember seeing a show a few years ago, and there were a lot of contact prints by Paul Strand and Stieglitz that were in there. And they were contact prints of various medium format and some semi-large format cameras. I think 4x5 was the biggest, but some of them were really small and there was just a sheer beauty and intimacy of doing that. Um, I think it would be interesting even to do a series of work that were contact prints off of 35 millimeter to really draw you in. But anyway, that's another subject for another day. What I do want to show you now are some of the things over on the computer side. Um, that will give you a lot of control over your printing process. So let's go over and have a look. So we're in Lightroom right now, and I wanna walk you through the printing process because black and white differs a little bit from color, even though it's still very easy to do. Uh, but when you're in Lightroom, the way you wanna start is just go to the top right-hand side of the screen and you click print, and it's going to bring you to the print dialog. Now, the first thing that's very confusing, and this is not an Epson thing, this is an Adobe thing, and there is a lot to be annoyed with Adobe with these days, particularly with Lightroom, but there are no less than four print buttons in here. On the bottom left-hand side of the screen, you have page setup and print settings. On the bottom right-hand screen side of the screen, you have print and printer. I've never been able to get print to work. Who knows why? But anyway, what you want to do actually is click printer. And you're getting a preview here, but a couple things you want to check. First of all, just make sure you have the Epson P600 series or whatever printer you're connecting to selected. And then what we're going to do is select the drop-down box on here, and I'm going to check color matching first of all. And I want to make sure that Epson is doing the color. So it's going to be the Epson color controls. And that should be selected by default, but if not, just go ahead and make sure that is selected. And then the next thing you want to do is skip down to the next dialog. Actually, it's three down, and it's going to be printer settings. And there's a couple options that you have in here, and these are pretty important to get the best print possible. So first of all, under media type, you want to make sure your paper is selected. And you can go through here, <clears throat> and there are a bunch of options for different things. And let's just say for the sake of argument here, we are using ultra premium photo paper luster. It will modify the way it prints based on the paper and the media that you have selected in there. So that is pretty important to have. The next thing you want to do is go down to print mode and you can select either AccuPhoto HD. You would want this for color. But what I'm actually going to do is select advanced black and white photo. And that's going to give me a, some different options down here. So the next one down, and this is really cool, especially if you have a dark uh, darkroom background. And this is color toning. Now, typically in the darkroom, this is do done with a combination of either some kind of toner. So if you want a sepia look or something like that, or you can get different papers that will render the black and white slightly different. And so you have warm and cool settings, neutral or sepia. Um, this last print that I did, I wanted the warm setting to kind of emulate the feel of a warm tone paper. Um, you can play around with those. Warm is obviously a slight more kind of a, uh, I don't even want to say a brown, but it's like, because it's like a sepia, but it's just a little, it's just a warmer hue to the black and white. Whereas when you go cool, it has a slightly bluer hue and it's very slight. And you, they have advanced settings for these too. You can go in and it's like that. Next for output resolution, and this is what I would do is make sure you consult what kind of paper you are using because I haven't noticed, I've played around with these settings between photo and super photo, and I've also toggled the high speed on and off. And basically what I can tell from Epson's website is they say that these are basically set up depending on what paper you're printing to. So certain uh, types of media, types of paper uh, require the high speed deselected and so on and so forth. So I haven't noticed a big difference so far in, in my 
adventures with this printer. But the other thing you can do is you can go under advanced color settings. And for instance, remember I had that warm tone set up so you can see this little thumbnail image is slightly warmer and you actually do have a color selector here and you can adjust the density on that. I would recommend that you print first um, just straight from the file uh, with the recommended settings. I really haven't had any trouble with this and if you really wanna get super nitpicky, the controls are there to do it. And then from here, when you're ready to print, just press print right here. I would not go back out and press print. I couldn't ever get that to work for some crazy reason. Uh, thank you, Adobe. So anyway, that's basically how you want to print. So just to review again, you're going to go down to the bottom right hand side of the screen and use the printer button and then do your settings from there. So that's essentially how you're going to print the best black and white image or the optimal black and white settings from the Epson P600. Remember, and for color, you're just basically going to change your print mode back to AccuPhoto HD. As I mentioned in the last video we did on inkjet printing, inkjet printing is a skill just like anything else. And I think one of the most difficult things about it is actually when you're learning how to just output in that change of environment. So you're going from basically what is a computer screen, which is backlit, and you're outputting it to a print, which is much different. If it's something you're not used to doing, you can go through a lot of supplies that do get expensive, like ink and paper. And I do have a resource for you guys if you all are interested, uh, and they happen to be our sponsor today, who are the awesome folks over at lynda.com. lynda.com are a video training library, and it's a subscription-based service, and they have a wonderful title on this called From Screen to Paper, and I highly recommend you check it out. I will put a link to it in the show notes below, and and you guys have an offer right now from Linda where you can get 10 days of free unlimited access to the entire website. So what I would do is if this is something you're interested in, go check it out absolutely free. And if you want to take advantage of that, what you want to do is go to lynda.com slash AOP. That is Linda with a Y, lynda.com slash AOP. And go ahead and sign up. That will give you 10 days of free unlimited access to the entire website. And so that could be very beneficial to some of you if you're not used to the computer side and some of the technicalities that go around the process of inkjet printing. So Anyway, check it out. I highly recommend it. Linda are excellent. They are the best in the business, and they have some amazing titles on there, really, that cover everything, uh, most of the creative arts, and a lot of stuff on photography, and I would definitely go check out that title. So once again, I want to give a shout out and special thanks to the folks at Linda for sponsoring another episode of The Art of Photography. So this has been an overview of making black and white prints using inkjet process, and as I mentioned, I mean, it's it's come a long way, and there's several options I will link to everything below if you're interested in the Paizo systems or you're interested in some of these Epson printers and there's a lot of options and I think printing technology has hit a really interesting stride especially when you consider that fewer photographers are actually printing their work these days which I think is very unfortunate but you know if you're serious about your work and you want to stand out and you want to do gallery shows and you want to take it really seriously I mean this is something to look into and as I mentioned we're going to do a bunch of videos in the next uh, month or two here on printing and we're going to go into darkroom process and some other things as well but anyway that's about all I got for today this has once again been another episode of The Art of Photography and I'll see you guys in the next episode later